violence and other kind of violence. What's good, YouTube? It's the Black Gen Z Mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe. And let's get into the video. Um, so the first story that we have, <clears throat> I just wanted to bring awareness to this situation. Um, Kamea Green, um, she is missing. She's been missing since August 31st, 2021. You know, um, we've had a lot of media uproar recently from, you know, the gabby petito brian laundry situation and a few african-american um media personalities came out and said hey why don't um you know why don't they shed a light on all the missing black and brown people who are out here who are missing well the reason why is because those same people who are complaining about the lack of coverage don't cover these stories so that's why i'm highlighting not only to um not only that but also to spread awareness about this woman's disappearance but this is why i'm covering these stories because the mainstream media is not going to do it even the ones who complain about not covering missing black and brown people they still don't cover it they still don't cover it they have to have pressure put on them to cover it because it's not a sexy story right that's why so um if you guys know uh or you know have any clues or tips on where kamea may be um she's been missing since august 31st 2021 um in the augusta georgia area um she's 15 years old black female um 5 5 160 pounds so <sighs> just make sure you guys stay out on the lookout man and be safe out there or down there in augusta man because it's getting real spooky. Viger High School was playing Williamson at Lad Peebles Stadium Friday night. It's a big rivalry game that was cut short by tragedy. At this moment outside the stadium, four people, three males and one female, were shot. Two of them are juveniles, one identified by the family as 18-year-old Jacoby Morgan. So we have a mass shooting at a football game. And this is not something that is new. This is not something that um, is random, okay? When it comes to a lot of these inner city football teams, these inner city schools, there are a lot of beefs that go back and forth. I remember in my high school, it was an east side versus west side beef. And the uh, high school I went to, Clark Central High School, we would beef with Cedar Shoals. And whenever we played a football or basketball game, it would always be fights. It'd always be something. Um, some years they might start shooting, some years they don't. But this is not something that is new in the black community. Um, for some reason, we cannot handle our differences amicably. In a beef that, you know, probably started off, you know, as friendly sports competition. Um, elevated and evolved into what is now like gang violence and gang activity because these rivalry teams on the other side of town, cross town rivals, the people in the school, they got nothing to do with sports, always take it too far. There was multiple uh, shots fired uh, on, here on the West Concourse uh, ramp. And we have the crowd scattering right now. We don't know if something has happened here on the ball game. Fans are running out onto the field and the players are getting down. Mobile Police Chief Paul Prine says there were five to seven shots fired at the victims, something he says the community should never have to deal with at a high school football game. My reaction to it is I'm disturbed by it. So this story is getting no coverage. This is another mass shooting, a school shooting. <clears throat> this is a school shooting, but because the assailants, the suspects, the sun specs, <laughs> if you will, because these assailants are black, it's not a big deal. Uh, those, those black folks, they do that all the time. They, they shoot up football games all the time. It's no biggie. Ah, whatever. 
right? Uh, you know, this is a place where family comes, children come after being in school all week. This is a place where they can come and enjoy the family, uh, the competition that's involved in it. And this type of gun violence is not going to be tolerated. And as the new chief, I can assure you, we will be very serious about it. One and they'll be like, yo, uh, Black Gen Z, how do you know it was, it was some black folks? It could have been a white, a white school shooter. Bruh, do you see the crowd? Did you see the football team? Okay. Big question investigators are trying to answer. How did the suspects get past the gate with a gun? As protocol state, everyone must walk through metal detectors and go through proper security checks. So they asked how the suspects got through with the gun. It's easy. Y'all see those fences? Anybody could have jumped those fences. Um, for two, you know, they could have given it to a woman. A lady friend. And um, another factor that could have happened is these dudes is always carrying and they brought straps to school. And when we had football games, a lot of times kids wouldn't even go home. They just stay on the school campus until the football. Like they would wait five hours, go to after school program, after school program. And, and they still got three hours. They walking around school campus. So they may have already been on campus before the game even started right and that's how you would like finesse getting in free you'll stay you'll stay at the school you'll you'll hide out in the classroom with one of your favorite teachers and you know you'll be out there and getting in the game for free just because you stayed on campus after school that's going to be a part of the investigation. I don't have that information right now. Mayor Sandy Stimson said in a statement, I have charged the Mobile Police Department and the officers of the Gulf Coast Technology Center with assessing current security protocols at LAD and where they failed. They will also be looking into what immediate steps need to be taken to improve stadium security and the long-term solutions needed to prevent individuals from bringing weapons into these kinds of events. Mobile police are currently looking for suspects, two of which they- There they go. Usual suspects. Usual suspects. <laughs> they believe fled the scene in a white sedan. We have uh, several individuals that may be involved, uh, but possibly just one shoot. Details this afternoon on an attempted mugging where a woman was chased right to her apartment door. You may recall this video. Police say they've caught the suspect who was seen in surveillance video running after the victim. He's been identified as 41 year old Orisha Lucky. He Yo, this man is 41 years old, still rocking a wife beater. Bruh's 41 years old, still rocking a wife beater. Post it on the block and get this. That's not the end of the story. He has 37 prior arrests. The incident happened in the Concourse Village section of the Bronx. 37 prior arrests. 37. And I spoke with uh, Ock Nation um, News on his live stream um, the other day. And I spoke about this situation. And he... And he, Ak was like, yo, he was trying to holler at her, this, that, and a third. I don't think so. I don't, I don't know. You know, I had a difference in opinion on this particular story here because he was running for dear life. And if he was trying to holler at her, okay, yeah, whatever. That's not the right way to do it, bro. As 41-year-old Orisha Lucky, he has 37 prior arrests. The incident happened in the Concourse Village section of the Bronx. We have an update now on the man who chased a Bronx woman into her apartment building last week. Police say they arrested Orisha Lucky, who is an ex who has rather an extensive criminal record with 37 prior arrests. NYPD detectives posted on social media the 41-year-old suspect was found thanks to a tip. Lucky now charged with attempted burglary, harassment, and criminal trespassing. All right, guys. So our final story here. We got Pop Smoke's accused killer. Okay. Attempts to get his murder charges dropped because he is the alleged driver and not necessarily the shooter. Okay. 
So this guy is saying, hey, I'm the driver. I wasn't the one shooting. So we'll read this little story and then I'll get to you guys. Um, and then we'll get up out of here. Uh, the only adult suspect accused in the late Pop Smoke's murder is trying to get a few of his charges dropped based on the fact that he was only the alleged driver during the commission of the crime and personally didn't kill anyone. Well, it doesn't matter if you personally killed anyone. In a lot of jurisdictions, if you aided and abetted in that murder, you will be charged with murder. Okay, the Shade Room was in court this morning when Corey Walker and his attorney Christopher Darden appeared before a judge with a motion to dismiss several charges. And if you guys don't know who Christopher Darden is, he, he was one of the guys who uh, defended O.J. Simpson, I believe, um, including murder with the uh, special circumstance that it occurred during a robbery and burglary. Walker is one of four suspects arrested in connection to Pop Smoke's murder with the other suspects being minors during the incident. While Darden tells us they're in talks of settling, he admits his team um, and the district attorney's office are nowhere near close to being done. Perhaps we'll have a re resolution or not, Darden said, adding, we all realize my client didn't kill anybody. He's a 19-year-old kid. It doesn't matter how old he is. Yo, these kids are on demon time at the age of 10, okay? So, yeah, they're 19, whatever. Okay, he's 19. It doesn't matter. He's still a jack boy. He's still a murderer. He still needs to be held accountable. In fact, Darden even argues that when his client gave another of the suspects his gun prior to the teens entering the home, he allegedly insisted that if it became necessary for the teens to defend themselves inside, they should use a flower vase rather than shoot someone. There is no evidence that the defendant had any prior criminal experience with his co-suspects or that he knew any of them was particularly violent or inclined to shoot and kill the victim. The document read, The defendant did all he could to prevent the death of the victim given the nature of the crime. The defendant was not present inside the house at the time of the shooting, so there was nothing he could have done to prevent the shooting once the suspects were inside. According to the docs, Darden even claims that Walker was so upset by his associates' actions that he assaulted the 15-year-old shooter when they returned from the scene. This was not the plan. The plan that was, was that nobody would be killed or injured, the docs read. So guys, if you run up into anybody's house, you have to expect a threat of violence, a threat of death, a threat of bodily harm. Darden also pointed out that his client had no knowledge of anyone else carrying a gun into the home besides the heat he provided to the team, the docs allege. Walker's gun was not the gun used to kill Pop Smoke, Darden says. He provided a single gun to a single person and told that person not to use it. That person did not use the gun or kill the victim, Darden said. At a preliminary hearing, prosecutors said Walker scouted the house hours earlier and knew the teens plan to rob pop smoke at gunpoint to obtain the ice he flashed on instagram photos earlier that day so guys be careful what you post on the gram these dudes on demon time and they will take your life over it they specifically targeted his house wanting the victim to be there said prosecutor hillary williams adding walker's actions showed a reckless indifference to human life the prosecutors will likely respond to friday's motion before the judge makes a decision at Walker's next hearing, which is slated for early December. We'll keep you posted on any update. Gang violence and other kind of violence.